Good morning, everyone. Today, I will be sharing with you five tips on how to read more. My name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. I have a very nice cozy hot cup of cocoa. It's not cocoa. I just, I always wanna say cocoa when like the British accent comes out. It's coffee. But anyways, I have a nice cozy cup of coffee and I thought that it'd be kind of fun to mix it up and do a little bit of a sit down and chatty video. And I really wanted to share with you guys five tips on how to read more. A couple disclaimers to start. Number one, you don't actually have to read more unless you want to read more. So if you're feeling like pressured, any random like people at the office who think that like you're only a real reader if you read more than 25 classics a year, let me just tell you they can all shove it. Read as much or as little as you personally want to read. I just happen to love pushing and challenging myself to read a lot of books every single year and so these are tips that I love doing. And then the second disclaimer is I genuinely thought that this video concept was like totally unique and new and then I googled it and I found out that Everyone has done this. And no way am I claiming that these tips are my own. These are just the things that I do as a full-time grad student and things that I did do as a librarian. Also, I'm sure you're gonna hear the heater. Sorry, it's really cold. But yeah, so without further ado, these are the tips that I do to read more. Tip number one, audiobooks. Groundbreaking, I know. Specifically though, my recommendation is to listen to audiobooks while you are doing mundane or boring or mindless tasks. There's nothing quite like popping in your headphones and getting lost in the shire while you're cooking pasta. You know what I'm saying? Listening to audiobooks passes the time quickly, kind of helps you forget that you're doing like a boring task, and bonus, it multitasks and totally counts for reading. What a win, right? Load a laundry to do, fold your towels with Jupiter North. Commuting to work, commute to work with Matt Haig. Taking a shower, blast an audiobook on speaker and take a shower with Gatsby. Wait, that sounds weird. And there's also a ton of great options as to where to get your audiobooks as well. For example, you could go to Libro FM. Libro FM is great because you get one credit every single month, and every time you purchase a credit through them, they actually support an independent bookstore of your choice. I'm actually signed up with them. Right now, I am supporting Parnassus Books up in Nashville because that's one of my very favorite independent bookstores of all time. Another option would be Audible. Audible's great thing is that literally they never limit any books, whereas if you go to any of the other services, sometimes the books are available or you have to pay extra for them, but with Audible, you have access to literally any one audiobook you want every single month without any restrictions. A super popular option is actually Scribd. Scribd is the cheapest price, so I think it's like $8.99 or $7.99 every single month, which is actually way lower than Libro FM or Audible, and technically, you have an unlimited amount of reads. I think they do cap you and there are certain restrictions on popular books, but Scribd is a super great option as well. And then also there is the Libby app. So if you have a library card, you can actually get audiobooks for free depending on what your library has in its database. So there's a ton of different options. I highly recommend going with Libby because Libby is free and with the libraries and we love the libraries in this house. But I also really, really like the benefits of every single one and I've actually used every single one of these apps. Tip number two, read what you want not what will impress that super hot and single English professor that you met last year. You might think this piece of advice sounds oddly specific, but um, don't worry about it. This took me a while to get to, but here's where I'm at now. Books are like movies. So some people prefer watching romantic comedies because they like to laugh and see something really light. Some people really love Disney movies at any age because it makes them feel nostalgic and safe and comforted. Some people really, really like indie films. There's a movie for every single person out there. And the funny thing is, I feel like we don't really judge our friends based on what their favorite movies are. So why on earth would we judge our friends for what their favorite books are? In my opinion, books are just another form of entertainment and art. I feel like there's so much pressure that if you're going to be reading, you need to be reading the right types of books. But honestly, who cares what the right types of books are? Who cares if you would rather read Lang Leave over Emily Dickinson? And honestly, if you're hanging out with people who are gonna make you feel bad because you prefer to read Caraval over Cloud Atlas, 
that's like the worst type of person and you don't wanna hang out with them anyways. Reading is something that you should do for you because you enjoy it and because it brings you joy, not for anyone else. Also as a side note, I highly, highly recommend both DNFing books and also mixing up genres. So you don't really know what you like until you try a little bit of everything in the book world. Um, I do highly recommend if you've never tried sci-fi, read a couple popular sci-fis. And if you've never tried anything by an indie author, try reading reading some indie authors. And if you've never tried a romance, try reading different romances because you never know, maybe you'll find something that you really, really love that you just need to try. And also there is nothing wrong with DNFing a book. That doesn't mean you're not eventually gonna pick it up. It doesn't mean that you might not change your mind back on that book. But like if you're reading a book and it's putting you in a slump, stop reading it and read what you want. Tip number three, make reading social. This sounds really weird, but hear me out. All of my current best friendships that I've made here on YouTube have actually all started at one point or another from a buddy read. There is something so incredibly thrilling about picking up a book and talking about it with somebody. It's so therapeutic to like find out that you're both secretly in love with the villain or that you both really hate how whiny a character sounds or that you love the writing style. I think it can even be fun when you have like a totally different opinion on a book too. So I highly, highly recommend doing things like reading a book together with a friend. You don't even necessarily have to be in the same room. I leave my friends text messages or DMs or voice messages and we just talk about the book whenever we can and it is so much fun. So okay, there are several ways to read socially. Number one is what I just talked about and it is the buddy read. The buddy read is super fun and it's really, really easy. All you have to do is call up one of your friends and be like, hey, do you wanna read a book with me? And they're gonna be like, what? And you're gonna say, I wanna read this book. It sounds really good. And they're probably gonna say yes because what are they doing right now? Nothing. Tip number two, join a book club. So I actually used to run three different book clubs at the public library when I was a librarian before I went back to grad school and I loved it. But there are tons of book clubs that you can actually join online without ever leaving your house, which is super ideal since we can't really leave our house. There are so many book clubs that I absolutely love participating in. I even have my own book club. If you like middle grade, my book club is A Touch of Whimsy and I co-host this with one of my friends, Kayla who is here online, but it's fun because most book clubs online usually have like an Instagram or a Twitter. Ours has a Discord where we do reading sprints and there's a little bit of a community and we have tabs where people can like find buddy reads and like make friends. It's a beautiful thing. And then finally, the third way that I would recommend being social is Goodreads. Goodreads is an app that I know a lot of booktube is familiar with, but I don't know exactly how familiar everyone else is. It's basically a social media platform for people who love books. You sign up and you can see what books your friends are reading, what books they have read, updates on books that they wanna read, and then people can see those things about you as well. Goodreads is really cool too because it actually tracks your progress and all of the books you've read. And I don't know, it's just really fun. People can see how many books you want to read in a year. They can kind of cheer you on. It's just, you know what, it's a good time. It's a really good time. Which kind of leads me to tip number four. Set aside time for reading and set reading goals. So if your goal is to read more, I personally think that you should put like a number on that. So maybe you wanna read 12 books in the year, one book a month, that's pretty doable. Maybe you wanna read something that would be pretty hard, which be like one book a week, or maybe even two books a week. I suggest doing a goal that you think you can reach, but also I feel like having a goal and putting it specifically on something like Goodreads is gonna keep you accountable and it's just kind of fun. There's also a lot of cool things that you can do if you wanna track your reading goals. You can have a reading journal, you can make a reading spread in your calendar, or you can of course use Goodreads, which is one of my very personal favorite ways to track reading. And then set aside time for when you want to read. Now this isn't for everyone, but I have found that if I say that I wanna read an hour before bed, I typically always know that I'm going to stay on track with my reading goals. Some people really prefer reading in the morning with a cup of coffee. Other people like to listen to audiobooks specifically while they're on their lunch break. So whatever works for you is what I recommend, but definitely set a little bit of time aside every single week or every single day to meet your goals. And then finally, tip number five is to watch booktube. You know what gets me excited about reading? Watching other people talk about 
how excited they are to read. When I watch other people talk about how excellent or amazing a book is, it usually gets me really excited and it makes me wanna pick up a book myself. Also, I would say that it can be really hard to find books that sound appealing just by browsing the bookstore alone or Amazon or whatever independent bookstore that you are online shopping at because sometimes you don't know what you wanna read until you hear the synopsis. And there are so many books at different bookstores and online on different websites that you can't necessarily read the synopsis of every single book. But if you watch booktubers who have very similar tastes, you kind of always know anticipated releases or books that sound interesting. And there are booktube channels literally for every single genre. There are booktubers who love thrillers and who love horror. There are booktubers who love middle grade. There are booktubers who specialize in fantasy. There are booktubers who just want to read nonfiction or who love nonfiction specifically. And so it's really cool because you can start to look up certain books and then see reviews or rants or raves from some of your favorite booktubers or some new booktubers. And all of a sudden you have a totally brand new channel that's going to recommend and pick out books just for your taste. I mean, it's like one of the coolest things in the entire world. I genuinely love booktube so much. <laughs> So there you go, those are all of my tips. They're pretty simple. However, these are all things that I use to help me read. I always read over 50 books a year. I know compared to some people, that's not a lot. I think last year I read 60 books, the year before that I read 73 books. But yeah, those are things that I use to help me read while I am a full-time grad student. And those are things that I also did while I was a full-time librarian. So hopefully some of these tips will work for you. But how about you guys? Do you have any tips for how to read more or on how to read more consistently, let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And I think that is it, my friends. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye! You were my best friend Didn't care about the rules Good on the weekends I'll be in fools Drifting in the deep space So brave and so stupid Just like the movies How it's gonna stay in the fire